Connie Edwards is our next poet. Many of you will know Connie because she's been around here in Greenwood for a while. She began writing poetry 10 years ago after the tragic death of a good friend. She's published a book of poetry called Shadows Dark and Light in 2019. Connie is the president of the Greenwood chapter of People to People International. And for several years, she organized a peace conference at Lander University. I, that's where I met Connie at that peace conference. She is a force to be reckoned with. Um, and we want to recognize the former university president, Dan Bell, and Dan Pardiek, a professor uh -oh. of environmental geology, who were instrumental in, um, in having that peace conference at Lander. In 2014, People to People honored Edwards as the Peace Poet Laureate of South Carolina. And I'm going to invite Connie to read two of her poems. The first one is called Bird Song. <laughs> Connie, you're on mute. Okay. Yes, we hear you now. All right. I'm honored to be here, Nikki. Thank you. Um, in these troubled times, you need to look around and just find something that gladdens your heart. And I'm a big bird watcher, of course, as probably all of you. And I wrote this little poem thinking of how much more sophisticated and kind the birds are, called Bird Song. A bevy of birds line up on the fence according to their treble song, those with the weakest pitch being given first dibs as the sun shines along. Content with their lot, being part of the choir, not wanting to lead the band. They bill and they coo while singing along and leave the pecking order to man. This poem made me chuckle, it made me think of my mother. <laughs> the next one is Irish coffee. Uh, my great-grandmother was a driving influence on our family, and she lived to be 99 years old, and this is for her. It's called Irish Coffee. The lodgepole pines cast long shadows over the blanket of snow. The only sound was the quiet crunch of leather slapping against gravel. She stepped forward toward the fieldstone well, unknotting the heavy wet rope and casting the pegged bucket into the black mouth of the well. Pulling the bucket up and over the edge, water splashed over her old collage. She poured the water into the carryall and replaced the rope on the well's hook. Breathing the apple crisp air, she went into the two-room shanty. On the blackened stove, the kettle set awaiting the boil. With drip coffee pot filled, she allowed the black brew to steep. From a shelf, she chose the rose teacup, a treasure from her Irish mother. Settling into the bent wood rocker, she sipped white coffee and rocked with a slow continence, feeling the miles home slipping away. Thank you, Connie. That was awesome. I'm gonna ask if anyone would like to um, comment or ask Connie a question about her poems or her poetry. I okay. lived that. Go ahead, Joseph. Uh, I lived that poem. <laughs> it was. It was definitely an era. I love the rose teacup. Yes. I. Th it, it always I sat right on that shelf. <laughs> I think that. 
Go ahead, Charla. I think that that teacup, all of us have, who have saved anything from our mothers or our grandmothers, it might have a crack in it. It might not be mm -hmm. anything except it was, maybe it was something they let us play with, but those hold such memories for us. And we hope that there is something that will hold similar memories for our children and our grandchildren, because we have so much more now that mm -hmm. we want that one thing to resonate with them. Um, Mim had her hand up, Mim. Yes, when, when I saw the title of your poem, I thought of a different kind of Irish copy from <laughs> <laughs> a long time ago during my drinking days. <laughs> but, uh, we have that much, at Christmas. <laughs> uh, well, I much prefer this, this version of oh. <laughs> Irish. It's, uh, it, it's very evocative of um, times past with the drawing of the water from a well. And um, although I didn't live that, I know my my parents, I was born in Kentucky when my parents were on the mission field and um, they lived in Appalachia in the mountains and my mother had to draw well water and uh, yeah. So thank you very much. It was very expressive. Thank you. Thanks, ma'am. Anyone else? Connie, I love both points. But the first one made me laugh out loud when you said <laughs> pecking order to man. <laughs> I thought that was Good. great. <laughs> so true. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, shall we move along? Let's see who the next poet is. Ah, here is a quote from Virginia Woolf. I will read it. If you do not tell the truth about yourself, you cannot tell it about other people. Wow. Mm -hmm. I think this is one thing that attracts me to writers and to poets in particular, because they tend to tell the truth, tell some truth about themselves as they're writing their poetry. So... Here is another beautiful portrait. We'll just reflect on this portrait for a little while. This portrait is in the exhibition at the Art Center of Greenwood right now. <laughs> 